In this video, we'll discuss the essential properties of the dot product. And we're actually not particularly interested in these properties at this point. We'll be much more interested in them later on when we discuss in a product. At this point, we'll simply use this discussion as an opportunity to spend more time with the dot product. And we will start this discussion with a somewhat bogus proof of the law of cosines. Do you remember what the law of cosines is for? If we have a triangle with a right angle, we have the Pythagorean theorem for it. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But when that angle is not 90 degrees, there is an additional term. And that's what the law of cosines is. And I'm about to quote unquote derive it. But there will be a flaw in that derivation. So see if you can spot it. And then our discussion of that flaw will lead us to our conversation about these essential properties. Okay, so let's now go after the law of cosines. So I have limited space, but I think it's enough. So let's have a triangle. And suppose two of its sides are represented by vectors a and b. And suppose the angle between them is gamma. And this last side will denote it by the letter c. We can point it either way we want, but we'll point it this way. Okay, so this is also a great example of using geometric vectors and algebra to prove some very nice theorems in geometry. Okay, our ultimate, ultimate goal is to express the length of the vector c in terms of the lengths of the vectors a and b and the angle gamma. Okay, and we will in a moment use notation that we don't frequently use. We'll use the letters without the arrows above them to denote the length of that vector. We prefer different notation. We like len of a vector, but in this case we'll use the traditional approach and just use the letter itself, which I actually like as notation, but it may lead to confusion to use the same letter for both the length and with a little arrow over it for the vector. Okay, but in this case we'll be careful so we won't be confused by it. So right now let's write down the vector relationship among these three vectors. And we find that c equals a minus b, which I'll write as a minus b, a minus b equals c. We're off to a good start. We have a little bit of algebra. And what I'm going to do now is dot both sides of this equation with itself because this vector equals this vector, then we must have that this vector dotted with itself equals this vector dotted with itself. So let's write that down. A minus B dotted with A minus B equals C dotted with C. Okay, so on the right hand side, we'll have the length of C squared, which will denote by C without the arrow squared. We'll get to the right hand side in a moment. Let's deal with the left hand side. What are we supposed to do on the left hand side? Well, of course, we'll, we need to multiply this expression out. So we'll quote unquote foil it out, which gives us a dotted with a, which according to our current notation is a squared, minus b dotted with a, and also minus a dotted with b. So b dotted with a and a dotted with b We'll use commutativity. Let's write it in. Here's what commutativity means. That A dotted with B equals B dotted with A. Okay. That will clearly hold. We'll discuss that when we get to it. So we'll have twice A dotted with B. Because here we have minus B dotted with A and minus A dotted with B. So it's minus twice a dotted with b, which of course is the length of a, times the length of b, times the cosine of the angle between them. And then there's also minus b dotting minus b, which is the length of b squared. And this equals c squared. And there you go. There is the law of cosines. What a neat derivation. It almost feels like something out of nothing. We just came up with the definition of the dot product and then boom, we have a theorem that's uh, in some sense not so easy to prove without this trick. So what's the flaw in this argument? There is a fundamental flaw in this argument. If this is all there is to it, 
if you find a book and that claims that this is all there is to it, it's not really telling you the truth. And here is why. That's because when we were multiplying this out, we, when we were foiling it, we were actually using the distributive property. Three times, actually. If you look at it carefully enough, here is the property we're using. I will again use vectors A, B, and C, even though they're not the same vectors A, B, and C. We would be using the property A dotted with B plus C equals A dotted with B, A dotted with B, plus A dotted with C. Does it fit? Yes, okay. It's not very neat, unfortunately, but you see. Okay, so when you FOIL expressions, when you multiply out sets of parentheses like this, you're first basically calling this a vector and you're using essentially that distributive law, and then you have to use it twice again to get rid of the other set, two sets of parentheses. So when we're FOILing, we're using the distributive law. But does the distributive law even hold for the dot product? That's the flaw. We're using this property without having established it first. And maybe it's not even true. And if it is true, maybe it's not so easy to establish it. Okay? So we'll get back to this question later on in this video in just a couple of minutes. It turns out to be true. Distributivity holds. And it can be shown with not too much hard work. So we're going to do that in a moment. Let's now go in order. And, act, and once we do establish that, that's actually a legitimate proof for the law of cosines. And not only a legitimate proof, but also a very neat way of memorizing what the law is saying. Okay, now let's go in order. Commutativity, does it, is it, does it hold? And if it does, is it easy to show? Yes, it does hold. And yes, it's very easy to show because what we have on the left-hand side is uh, the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle between them. And on the right-hand side, we have the length of B times the length of A. They're just numbers, so they obviously compute times the cosine of the angle between them. One thing to be careful about is when you say cosine of the angle between them, does the angle have a sign? Maybe the angle is positive when you go from A to B and negative when you go from B to A. It depends on one's convention, uh, whether you even consider the angle to be a sine quantity. But even if we did, even if the angle was a sine quantity, once you take the cosine, it doesn't matter because the cosine of an angle equals the cosine of minus the angle. So even if the angle is considered to be a sine quantity, it's not even an issue here and commutativity holds. What about associativity? Associativity would look like something like this. A dotted, oops, A dotted with B dotted with C, and I won't even continue because this expression is completely nonsensical. A dotted with B is a number, and you cannot dot a number with a vector. So associativity comes up when there is when there are two operations and you're worrying about which operation to carry out first. Well, here there cannot be two operations. The dot product just doesn't work like that. So associativity cannot even be considered. So I'm crossing it out. Not that it fails, I would say it cannot even be considered. Which leaves us with distributivity. And before I actually prove distributivity, and you know, I'll erase the board and prove it cleanly, I'll first want to put a seed of doubt so that you see how complicated this uh, property actually is once you draw what you're talking about. We need to have a vector A. Let's see. Pretty good place for it. Suppose this is the vector A. Here is a vector B. Let's go for a different color. Here is a vector B. And here is a vector C. The sum will be over here. Okay, messy, but no problem. B, C, and here is, that's not bad, B plus C. B plus C. And here is what distributivity is saying. That 
the dot product of A and B plus C, which is the length of A, times the length of B plus C, times the cosine of this angle right here, equals A dotted with B, the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of this angle, plus the length of A times the length of C times the cosine of this angle. Now, is it clear or easy to see that the first quantity I mentioned on the left-hand side equals the sum of the other two quantities from this picture? Do you see the complicated interplay among these angles? So, I don't think it's at all obvious or easy to see. But it's not too difficult to actually prove this. And that's what we're going to do now after I erase the board and draw this picture neatly up here. All right, here's the picture for the proof. Let me step out of the shot. Here we have the vector A and two vectors B and C and their sum B plus C and the relevant angles are denoted by different symbols here. And remember, just before I pause the video, this is the picture that we had down here. And it actually put a doubt in our mind as to whether distributivity actually holds because this picture is very complicated and it's not at all obvious that this relationship that I'm about to describe holds. But once you see the path to the proof, it actually becomes pretty easy to see. So here it is. What we need to show is that the A dotted with B plus C, which is the length of A times the length of B plus C times the cosine of this double arc angle right here, the angle between B plus C and A, equals a dotted with B plus A dotted with C. So we have the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle between A and B plus A dotted with C, which is the length of A times the length of C times the cosine of the angle between A and C. Okay, so first thing to notice is that each one of these terms and therefore each one of these terms has the length of A in it. So we can simply cancel it on both sides, divide by length of A on both sides. Length of A is not zero, and if it's zero, distributivity is easy to see. So this is the relationship we're left with that we need to prove. And what's nice about the remaining quantities is that all of them have a straightforward geometric interpretation that we saw before in an earlier video. And that interpretation was the length of the projection. For example, let's look at length of B plus C, which is the length of this vector, times the cosine of this double arc angle. And that, from this triangle right here, you can see that it's the length of the projection of the vector B plus C onto the vector A. Here is a right triangle. If this has length B plus C and this angle is that, then length of B plus C times the cosine of this angle is precisely this segment. Now let's go after analogous quantities for these two terms. Here we have the length of B times the cosine of this angle. So here, length of B and from this triangle right here, we see that it's this segment right here. I'm just taking it down a little bit, taking it down a notch, uh, so we can see them one against the other, but of course it's right here. And then finally the length of C times the cosine of this angle between A and C, and from this triangle right here, it's this segment. That's about right. And the question is, do the two of these segments add up to this longer one? And the answer is, of course, yes, it's easy to see. Because what's missing here, right here, is exactly this segment. Because this segment right here, you can see from this picture, is the length of the projection of this guy. And this vector actually equals vector C, so it has the same projection. So this segment equals, this little guy equals this segment. You can bring it over here. And then it's clear that the sum of these two segments equals this one. It's just a statement about projections adding up. Apparently projection is a linear sort of thing where it doesn't matter if you project first, project first and then add them together, or whether you add them together first and then project. Okay, so that completes the proof of the distributive property. We have commutativity, no associativity, doesn't even make sense, and we have distributivity. And this completes 
our discussion of the essential properties of the dot product. I think the next important thing to talk about is the representation of the dot product in component spaces with respect to Cartesian bases.